Hello friends, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, day 12, developing your friendship with God. You know, this is an interesting chapter, um, or inter inter introducing a challenge. Um, you are close to God as you choose to be. That is the opening statement on day 12. You are close, you are as close to God as you choose to be. That seems to be saying a whole lot right there in just those couple words. You know, there's a couple different things that we must do. Um, one of those is being honest with God. That's That's got to be the first step we do um, in developing a friendship with God is we have to be completely honest and not just tell him what we think he wants to hear. Um, not just go through the motions, but be very honest with him. If we're upset, if we're mad, if we're um, second-guessing, if we're accusing, if we're complaining, um, if we're arguing, we need to be able to, to do that. And, and God doesn't... How can I say this? Um, he doesn't frown upon that. In all reality, he welcomes that because it's, it's, it's being authentic. It's, it's really saying what you're feeling. And God isn't one that is going to be upset for you expressing how you feel. Um, as we go through this chapter, we're going to see plenty of times where God could have chosen a different way of doing it, um, of how he reacted. And he chose to still react with compassion, with love. Um, many people feel that, you know, if you voice those things to God, that um, he's going to he's he, he's going to be mad at you, and he's he's going to uh, just cause a lot of problems in your life. And that's not how it is. That's not how it is at all. Um, it's the first building block is being honest with God. It's the, it's the very first one. It's the foundation of being honest. Uh, you got to be open with Him. If you want a deeper friendship and if you want a deeper closeness with God, it requires complete honesty about your faults and your feelings. He already knows them. He already knows what you're going to say before you say it. You're not going to surprise Him. Think of it like this. Um, when you had maybe had a best friend, maybe you still have a best friend, that, or someone that you would consider a best friend, you're able to tell them anything, right? How you feel about a certain situation, your worries, everything. They know your faults. They know your deepest, darkest secrets. How is that friendship? I imagine it's pretty strong. It's probably been through a lot. That's the same thing that God wants from you. He already knows everything about you. You're not going to surprise him. You're not going to shock him. But what you have to do is you have to unload that from your heart. You have to pour that out. It's the only way that you can move forward. You can't hold on to it. If you're resenting God, if you're upset at God for some reason, tell Him. And move forward. Don't let it stop you where you're at. Don't let it hinder you. He loves you too much for you to hold on to something. You know, and sometimes you may not understand why it happened. Maybe we couldn't see down the road of that situation. And then what happened when you got through that situation? I bet you kind of felt better about it, right? Maybe sometimes you were <clears throat> upset with God was when you had uncertainty. It's normal. It's normal. Everyone has doubts. I mean, let's look at a couple of them. 
Abraham. Abraham was allowed to question and challenge God over the destruction of the city of Sodom. And he actually started negotiating him down from 50 to 10. So God told him what he was going to do. And he said, well, would you do that if there was 40? Would you do that if there was 30? Would you do that if there was just 10? And God said he would. We also see about David's um, he had many accusations of unfairness, betrayal, and abandonment. And God did not slay Jeremiah when he claimed that God had tricked him. Job was allowed to vent his bitterness during the, his ordeal. And in the end, God defended Job for being honest and he rebuked, rebuked Job's friends for being uh, in, in a thoughtic. God told him, you haven't been honest either with me or about me nor the way my friend Job has. My friend Job will now pray for y'all and I will accept his prayer. So, God wasn't mad about it. Actually, the opposite happened. He started defending him because he was completely honest with God. He didn't just go through the motions. After all, Jesus is the friend of sinners, right? He, he already knows you. He had every one of your days planned from the moment you were conceived. Do you really don't think that he's, he's not going to know how you're going to react? So get it off your chest. The only thing that's, that's, that's not hurting him is hurting you. And you're holding on to that. It's causing so many problems in your life. Be honest with God and let it go. I know it's hard. I know it's not easy. It says here, to be God's friend, you must be honest to God, sharing your true feeling, not what you think you ought to say. I think that sums it up right there. greatest barrier to friendship with God is bitterness some questions that we may say is why would I want to be God's friend if he allowed this there's probably always been times where we may have had unanswered prayers maybe the situation didn't go the way we thought it was or we've been praying for a long time and haven't even seen those prayers answered The antidote, of course, is to realize that God always acts in your best interest, even when it is painful and you don't understand it. But releasing your resentment and receiving your feeling is the first step to healing. As so many people in the Bible did, tell exactly how you feel. God can handle it. You know... David once prayed, I pour out my complaints before him and tell him all my troubles, for I am overwhelmed. He already knows all your faults. He already knows all the things you're, you're struggling with. Talk to him about it. It's going to change how you, how you see God. Next thing you got to do is you must choose to obey God in faith. You must choose to obey God in faith. Every time you trust God's wisdom, you do whatever he says, even when you don't understand it, you deepen your friendship with God. We don't normally think of obedience as a characteristic of friendship. That's reserved for friendships with a parent or a boss or a superior officer not a friend however Jesus made it clear that obedience is a condition of intimacy with God he said you are my friends if you do what I command Jesus said it 
You are my friends if you do as I command. You know, um, we obey God not out of duty or fear or compulsion, but because we love Him and trust that He knows what is best for us. We want to follow Christ out of gratitude for all He has done for us. And, we, and the closer we follow Him, the deeper our friendship becomes. Jesus said, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey me, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father and remain in His. So, you know, when the 30 years that Jesus' life is not documented, it's not in the Bible anywhere. But He summed it up in two words He lived obediently. That's what they said. He lived obediently. So 30 years that we don't even know existed or how it existed or what he did in those 30 years he summed up in two words. 30 years of obediency. And his father was well pleased with him. You know, I'm going to finish reading the scripture here. And I'm going to start from the beginning again. Jesus said, I have loved you even as a father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey me, you remain in my love. Just as I obey my father, remain in his love. I have told you this so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Notice that Jesus expected us to do to, to do only what he did with the Father. His relationship with his Father is a model of our friendship with him. Jesus did whatever the Father asked him to do out of love. True friendship isn't passive, it acts. When Jesus asks us to love others, help the needy, share our resources, keep our lives clean, offer forgiveness, and bring others to him, Love motivates us to obey immediately. You know, we're often challenged to do the great things for God. Actually, God is more pleased when we do the small things for Him out of living, uh, out of living in obedience. They may be unnoticed by others, but God notices them and considers them acts of worship. So we learned about worship in day 10. Great opportunities may come in a lifetime, but small opportunities surround us every day. Even through such simple acts as telling the truth, being kind, encouraging others, we bring a smile to God's face. God treasures simple acts of obedience more than our prayers, praise, or offerings. Yeah, that's, that's so powerful. God treasures simple acts of obedience more than our prayers, our praise, or offerings. The Bible tells us what pleases the Lord more, burnt offering and sacrifices or obedience to His voice. It is better to obey than to sacrifice. In the Bible, it says that. So the small things. How you treat others. We've seen that one. Telling the truth. Encouraging others. Brings a smile to God's face. two more points in this one of them is, is I must choose to value what God values this is what friends do they care about what is important to the other person you must value what God values you know there's Paul and David and They actually said uh, that they were upset that they cared for God so much. They were upset that they cared for God so much. It bothered them. 
David said that the passion for his house burns within me. So those that insult you are insulting me. Paul saying it says the only thing that has me upset is has me so upset is that I care about you so much. This is the passion of God's burning inside me. So there's two people that God used pretty pretty significantly in the Bible. And they loved him and put God's values, what God cared about, in their hearts. Have you ever asked God that to experience that? To Make your heart hurt for what makes his. It's a pretty powerful thing to say in a couple couple words. That's probably the most important thing you could probably pray. Friends of God tell friends about God. To be a friend of God, you must care about all the people around you from whom God cares about. You must desire a friendship with God more than anything else. You gotta desire it. You gotta want it. You gotta choose to seek Him. David passionately desired to know God above all else. And he used words like longing, yearning, thirsting, hungering. He craved God. He said, the thing I seek most of all is the privilege of meditating in his temple, living in his presence every day of my life, delighting in his incomparable perfections and glory. Now, if you want to go through a lot of this, open up Psalms. And go through that. That's full of different emotions. From every emotion you can possibly imagine is in the songs. Jacob uh, <laughs> often wrestled with God's blessing on his life. It was so intense that he actually said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. It's just an amazing part of the story in that God, who is all powerful, let Jacob win. God isn't offended when we wrestle with him because wrestling requires personal contact and brings us close to him. It is also a passionate activity that God loves it when we are passionate with Him. And we've seen that in Paul. <laughs> we've seen a lot of things with Paul. The truth is you are as close to God as you choose to be. Intimate friendship with God is not a choice, not an accident. You must in intentionally seek it. Do you really want it? More than anything? What is it worth to you? Is it worth giving up other things? Is it worth the effort of developing the habits and skills required? I bet you probably never asked yourself that question, huh? Do you really want a friendship with God more than anything else? Will you put in the time, the efforts... Would you give up other habits and skills and acquire the discipline to actually do it? You may have been passionate about God in the past, but you've lost that desire. That was a problem with the, of the Christians in Ephesus. The they had left their first love. They did all the right things, but out of duty, not love. 
If you're just going to go through the emotions spiritually, don't be surprised when God allows pain in your life. Pain is full of passion. It energizes us with the intensity of change that, what, that we don't normally process. And that's true. That's true. Pain energizes us to, to make a change. So, <laughs> and you're probably thinking there's got to be an easier way. There is. Start asking God to give it to you. And keep asking for it until you have it. And pray this throughout your day. Dear Jesus, more than anything else, I want to get to know you intimately. When you're serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. That's the promise to hold on to. So when you pray that prayer, dear Jesus, more than anything else, I want you to get to I want to get to know you intimately. Also add in, for God, you have promised that if I was serious about finding you and want it more than anything else, you will make sure I won't be disappointed. I want you to pray that. I want you to claim that. You know, when you pray, it's always good to recite God's word back to him. And remind him of his covenant with us. So as you're writing your prayers down and you're writing notes in your journal, write a prayer to God. Asking him that you want to get to know him and to That you want more than anything else to seek him. But you may not know how to do that. You may be holding on to some things that may be blocking that. Ask him to provide those healings. Call back scriptures to him. There's a there's a book that is a really, really good book to have. It's called The Thousand Promises of God. And if you haven't seen it or don't know about it, it's a good book to grab. And it literally, what it does is it has an index in the beginning. And it breaks everything down. And there's not a promise in there that isn't covered. So what I do is, when there's times where I am just wanting that promise to be activated, I'll recite it right back to him. For God, your, your, your word says, and then I'll recite it back. It will change your prayer life. Because as you're doing it, you're getting to know His Word even more intimately. So you're seeking Him. And don't forget, it's the small things. As you go through your day, it could be something as far as you see someone in the grocery store that is struggling to pay for her groceries and having to put things back. What would God want you to do there? Would you want her, would you, would he want you to ignore her? Would you want it, or would he want you to bless her? Pour out your love on others. And don't do it to boast about it. And don't do it for to look good in front of somebody else or to post it online or to Snapchat or anything else like that. Do it in secret. For God sees what you do. And you don't need anyone else. For when He smiles at you, 
you'll feel it. You will feel it on the inside of your soul. And when you feel it, it is so moving. You'll wait for the next opportunity that you get to feel that again. And you will seek it. And you will yearn for it. And the funny part is, is when you think you're doing it in secret, someone else may be paying attention. I'll give you an example of that. I went and I, we were, me and my wife and daughter were, were eating and we noticed a homeless man that came in. And I could tell that the manager was not happy with him being there. And he started to usher him, him out. He just wanted to get warm. He wasn't gonna bother nobody. So, I got up and I went outside. And I asked him if he was hungry. And he, he smiled and said, yes, I am. So I went in there and now he's with it. Now he's no longer imposing. He's a paying customer. So I went in there with him and he got up to the counter. I told him, what do you want? So he started ordering and he looked at me and says, can I get a milkshake too? Yeah, give yourself a milkshake too. And he had such a smile on his face. And I could tell the manager's probably a little annoyed with my activities. But I wasn't doing it for him. So he went and he, he got his meal and he sat down. And he was so thankful. And I sat back down and I finished eating with my family. And about a week later, about a week later, we had something very similar happen. But this time my daughter got up before I could get up. She did the exact same thing. And she sat back down and I was just so proud of her. She was seeing and learning. I didn't have to tell her what to do. She already knew. And I hope that's contagious. I hope that when someone else sees that, that it gets on the inside of them like they did, like it did on her. I pray that for everybody. Let God change you. Let Him get on the inside of you. You'll never be the same again. And that's a good thing. Because when you change, others change around you too. Let it be contagious. Seek first the kingdom of God and you will not be disappointed. One of the things that they give us at the end of each day is a, a question to consider and this one says, what practical choices will I make today in order to grow closer to God? I want you to think about that question. What practical choices will I make today in order to grow closer to God? I could also be read as, what lifestyle changes am I willing to give up? What am I willing to be obedient to? Maybe it starts off with five minutes in your special place or prayer room or war room 
and you just meditate on the scripture. Meditate on his word. And then turn it into 10 minutes, then 15, then 20, then 25. Before you know it, you're spending hours in there just praising him and worshiping him. You're seeking him constantly. Or maybe there's a time where you feel like you can bless someone else. Or maybe you're kind, you're kind to someone that wasn't kind to you. And by the way, it throws them off when you do that. I've had it, I've had it where someone wasn't kind to me, but I was kind to them. And they don't know what to do. It stops them in their tracks. Because they're not expecting that. Jesus was a man of surprises. He was never surprised. But others around him were always surprised. So, just remember that how much he loves you. And grow your friendship with him. Grow your friendship with him. Maybe you just need to have an honest prayer time with him. And pour everything out. Pour it all out. Don't hide anything. Whatever it is that you're burying deep, get it out. Confess it. I'd be glad you did. I'd be glad you did. Well, friends, that, that ends that day's teaching. Tomorrow we're going to do a worship that pleases God. It's going to be an interesting chapter. Hope you're ready for it. Um, I'd like to pray at the end. So, um, Father God, we just come to you, Lord. Lord, we seek your presence, Lord. Lord, grow us in the intimacy with you, Lord. Show us, Lord. Let us be aware of what things please you, Lord. Lord, we want to please you. We want to glorify you, Lord. So let our mouths, let our eyes, let our hands, let our actions not disappoint you, but glorify your name, Lord. Lord, speak to us like you've never spoken to us before, Lord. Whether it's in the car while we're driving, Lord, and we're just praying a breath prayer and we're just a short little prayer over it, Lord. Or whether we are confessing things to you, Lord. Or whether we're just asking for forgiveness, Lord. Let, let those words be heard, Lord, and received, Lord. And Lord, fill us, Lord, with your presence, Lord. Surround us, Lord. Lord, I invite you into me, Lord. I invite your presence, Lord. You are such a wonderful Father to us, Lord. Lord, you always have our best interest in mind, Lord. And Lord, I don't need to understand it, Lord. I don't need to know that, Lord. I don't need to know your purpose, Lord. For I'm content where I am. I'm content with being obedient, Lord. So, Lord, what I used to feel as I have to know, Lord. I don't need to know, Lord. I just want to receive and praise you, Lord. I want your presence to be so in, in tune to me that it flows out of me, Lord, and to others. Lord, use me as a vessel, Lord. Use me to reach others, Lord. 
Use me to be able to bless others, Lord. And I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful to us, Lord. You're an amazing, amazing Father to us, Lord. And we love you so much, Lord. Lord, I can feel your presence, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have healed me, Lord, not just emotionally, but spiritually and physically, Lord. That your healing is here, Lord. That strongholds are broken down. That chains are broken. That walls are, are, are just laid flat, laid level, Lord. That your presence, Lord, is so strong, Lord, that you are filling us with a double portion of your Holy Spirit, Lord. We receive it, Lord. Lord, that our friendship with you grows. That we get to talk to you, Lord. We get to talk to you on a whole new level. More than we've ever talked to you before, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me. Um, we love you. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.